Hola y un abrazo fuerte. Today we're going to talk about my five-year plan and not just any part of my five-year plan. We're diving deep into the who, what, where, when, why, and how. And stay to the end pretty please because the how part is where we're going to spend all the time in this video. We're going to kind of cruise past the rest. Obviously, you know who, but we're going into the what, where, when, why, and how. Say that five times fast. <laughs> What is my five-year plan? The what? My five-year plan is to leave the US, move, immigrate to Merida, Mexico, live a tranquil life without a mortgage, and occasionally travel. Ah, doesn't that sound lovely? To make this possible, the ultimate strategy is to have two homes for rentals and one home to live in, all mortgage-free, and then I can just focus on being a fantastic host and occasionally take some trips of my own. The where part of my story is, as you know, Merida, Mexico. And how did I choose that? I mean, I have another video on that, but I'll just touch on it here. You know, I had lived in Mexico before. I was very comfortable being in Mexico. I love the country. And my uncle, dad's best friend, kept saying, hey, you gotta check out Playa del Carmen. So I'm online, I'm looking at properties at Playa del Carmen, and it just, you know, it just dawned on me that I know that I'm not a full-time beach town resident. I wanted a big city, but not a super huge city. <laughs> and I found Merida literally by accident, by looking at the drop-down menu on a real estate website. And once I kind of honed in on what Merida was, I started devouring everything I could read, everything I could watch on YouTube. And then in January, 2018, I took my first trip. Love, love at first sight. I was like, this is home. Like in my bones, this is home. When, the when part of my plan, my five-year plan to move to Merida, Mexico. Short answer, January, 2026. <laughs> That's when I hope to move there full time. So I created this five-year plan and I never put an end date on it, so it was always five years away. And that's just like unattainable. <laughs> like you're never gonna get there. <laughs> so I uh, downloaded this app, uh, Countdown. It's a free app. I don't get paid anything. It's kind of fun. And I just picked a date five years out and I decided to choose my birthday, which is in October. And that kind of motivated me. And it's kind of fun to look at once in a while. But now that it's getting close, it's like, ooh, <laughs> Oh boy, I better hunker down and continue to downsize and minimize. Um, and when I look at my countdown now, it says I have one year, one month, and 23 days. <laughs> oh, and the reason I put January is just like October is so close to the holidays, I thought I would push the actual move um, out to January. That's all. Okay, the why part of the plan is really threefold. Love, health, and finances. When I turned 50, I started taking a hard look at my finances and what I could afford. And sure, I could I could have stayed the course and stayed here in the US, worked really, really, really hard to pay off my tiny house here and just called it a day. Uh, but then there's also the cost of healthcare in the US. And you know, to continue to work at the level that I'm working at now until 62, I might have died. I mean, I'm not kidding, here we go. <laughs> the stress level just might have done me in. So I've decided to roll things back, take a massive pay cut. We're gonna touch on that here in a minute because next year my income will drop by half and that's by design, but um, I digress. Let me go back to our subject of why. The other reason, um, health. Okay, we just touched on that, you know, you see? <laughs> we just touched on health the affordability of very high quality healthcare in Mexico as well. Um, and the other is love. I love Mexico. In the early 90s, I spent three years in Mexico in a very small town where maybe a half a dozen people spoke English. I learned the language, I learned the culture, and I attribute Mexico, the culture, the people for changing me as a person for the better. Like Mexico changed me and I'm eternally grateful. And yeah, that. 
Okay, here we come to the last part and the biggest part of the who, what, where, when, and why of my story is the how. If you like this content and you would like to see more of this or have any follow-up questions you'd like to see me do a video on, please put it in the comments below. Also, I would much, much appreciate it if you would subscribe and if you ring that bell, it will notify you when I release a new video. <laughs> Thanks. My move to Mexico really started in about 2015 when I lost my house to bankruptcy. That was a couple years prior, but in 2015, I bought a little tiny houseboat in Seattle and I only had half the money to buy it when I finally cobbled together the money to buy this cheap little thing. That's a good thing it was cheap because it literally started falling apart within the first year that I started living on it. So the first part of my journey was acquiring this little houseboat in Seattle that was a hunk of junk and I loved it. <laughs> I don't know if it was you know, losing my house to bankruptcy and, and that going together with being a real estate broker, like, oh my gosh, she's a broker. She <laughs> lost her house to bankruptcy. Um, or the fact that owning this little tiny 240 square foot house barge, which we'll call it a houseboat for, for the purpose of this video. You know, there was something about owning that little tiny thing to have that sense of home ownership again. So here's how the story goes. One day, I'm on my little house barge and it kind of lists to one side. It's a little heavy on the kitchen side as a lot of these are. But one day I go to make fried eggs in the pan and you crack the egg and put it in the pan and it goes to one side of the pan rather quickly. And I hopped off the boat and I looked back at it in the water line and it was really like, almost like a dog. And uh, I immediately hauled it out. And that's when the major remodel process began. Well, keep in mind, I was just paycheck to paycheck. Didn't know when the pe next paycheck was gonna come, but I got it hauled out. And thank goodness for friends. I needed help and I asked for help. And I'm very grateful for these friends. But for, I think about seven months, I couch surfed, really guest bedrooms, but I would stay a month here and a month there with different friends also to not wear them out with my presence and, you know, keep a suitcase with me. And I did that the whole time that the houseboat was being fixed up. She was called Orca. And that allowed me to be able to save the money to make the next payment on the, the boat yard where it was being worked on. That was expensive or the materials or the contractor. And it just seemed to work out that every time something else came up, I just had a closing and it just worked out. So I, I put on my big girl pants <laughs> and I made it work. So I sold my houseboat at a profit and that little amount of money, that little bucket, enabled me to buy a floating house in Oregon. And this was 2017, I started um, planning my, my move home because both my parents were having some health issues and my dad had just had a major health incident. He's okay, by the way. Um, so I decided to move home in 2017. Selling that with that amount of profit uh, enabled me to buy this really big floating home. I wasn't looking for a big floating home, but it was cheap, it was dated, and it was in the marina that I wanted to live in. So that's how that chunk of change transferred from 240 square foot houseboat to 2000 square foot floating house. So now I'm here in Oregon and I've decided, you know, to specialize in selling floating homes. And my broker friends in Seattle thought I was absolutely nuts. They were like, Amy, you're crazy. Nobody wants to sell these things. They're, the price point's super low, they're super complicated, and no one wants to touch them with a 10 foot pole. Well, I was buying one to live on and my parents lived on one and they lived on one for like 20 plus years. So I didn't have the energy or the bandwidth to move to a new state, even though it was my home state, but for work-wise, and try and become the resident expert in a popular neighborhood like Alberta Arts or the Hollywood District. I just decided to specialize in floating homes and a niche was born. It became my niche. It served me well. I love selling houseboats and floating homes. Like what's not to love? Part of my job is walking up and down the docks and seeing neighbors and, 
and checking in and chatting with them. I mean, come on, I am gonna miss that part of selling floating homes. I lived in the big house while fixing it up with the little bit of money I had from the houseboat sale in Seattle. And then once I fixed it all up, I refinanced it because I spent all my money fixing it up. So I had to refinance it. Well, with the refinance, I pulled out the equity so that I could buy the first house in Merida. That's how that worked. Well, now that I refinanced it, I had a big old mortgage payment. So I took in a roommate. I was not looking for the blue cactus house on 66, but a broker called me to tell me about it. Ooh, and good thing it was a ruin, um, or I never would have been able to afford it. And I jumped on that opportunity. So after that refi and taking in a roommate and buying the house in Merida, all my money was gone again. So I started saving again. Well, that went well for two years. I was able to save up some more and kind of recuperate a little bit. And then two years into having a roommate, he passed away. Next phase. This led me to selling the big house, which is always part of the plan. Now we're at the downsize minimized part. Selling the big house and buying the tiny floating house, which was a hunk of junk when I bought it. But again, <laughs> I guess I like a hunk of junk, whatever. So I bought the tiny floating house and the profit from the big one helped me fix up the tiny floating house. Are you seeing a theme here? I fix it up and take that little, it's like the same bucket of money that just moves around getting me from A to B. What could have been my darkest hour living on a tiny houseboat that was sinking for all intents and purposes and having just lost my house to bankruptcy, I mean, I could have gone dark, but instead I decided to pull up my britches, as my grandmother would say, and get to work. The other important how part of my five-year plan to move to Merida, Mexico is my career. I've developed a career here and a niche market, and I have a plan for kind of exiting out of that career. I touched on this a little bit earlier. Next year is 2025, and my business partner, who is newer in the industry, she and I have been working together for seven years, she's gonna to move to the forefront of the business and I'll step back a little bit in more of a consulting role. So it'll be her name on everything, her name on the signage, her name on the listings. And also it, it feels really good to you know, leave a legacy. Uh, so for 2025, I am staying here in the US and handing over the business properly over time. So next year I'll still work, but I'll be a little more in the background she and they, bringing on one more person, will be in the foreground the following year, 2026, then I'll be way in the background, uh, and so on and so forth, until I'm just gone and the business is properly handed over. I'm so close to my goal, so you might be wondering, why not now? You know, every time I talk about stress to you guys, I start to tear up. <laughs> Uh, so you might be wondering, why don't you just cut and run right now? Well, a few things. I do want to hand the business over in a responsible way to where they will be successful with it. And I leave a little bit of legacy because I do love the community of floating home people. Uh, and the other is my parents. You know, I have no crystal ball there and I want to spend time while I can. And that's probably another video, but we'll, we'll leave that one for another time. In the meantime, I greatly appreciate you watching and staying to the end. That very much helps the algorithm. And here we go, everybody. Un abrazo fuerte, besitos y cuídate mucho.